A little more than an hour to the north of Lisbon you can find the charming town of Alcabaca. Known particularly for its monastery around the region. It may look like it was built in the 18th century because of the architecture, but it was actually founded in 1153 by the Portugal's first king, Afonso Henriquez, as a gift to Bernard of Clairvaux as white monks to celebrate the king's victory over the Moors at Santarum in 1147. This monastery and its church were the first Gothic buildings to exist in Portugal and, fast forward eight centuries, in 1989 UNESCO listed it as a World Heritage Site. The Alcabaca Monastery was among the first locations for the Cistercian Order, aka the White Monks in Portugal. The complex itself is striking, but an interesting detail about it, is the door to the kitchen. Apparently, the monastery of Alcabaca's resident monks were eating plenty of foods. Eventually their reputation for excessive plumpness became problematic. A hefty physique may have signified prosperity and health in 1178 when construction began on the UNESCO World Heritage Site, but by the 18th century, those extra rolls of flesh were considered at odds with the Cistercian monks' vows of obedience, poverty and chastity. Its larders were well stocked, thanks in part to the rich farmland surrounding the monastery. 18th century traveler William Beckford described the kitchen in recollections of an excursion to the monasteries of Alcabaca and Batalha. On one side, loads of game and venison were heaped up, on the other, vegetables and fruit in endless variety. Beyond a long line of stoves extended a row of ovens, and close to them hillocks of wheat and flour whiter than snow, rocks of sugar, jars of the purest oil, and pastry in vast abundance, which a numerous tribe of lay brothers and their attendants were rolling out and puffing up into a hundred different shapes, singing all the while as blithely as larks in a cornfield. Later he has the opportunity to sample some of the dishes issuing from that kitchen. The banquet itself consisted of not only the most excellent usual fare, but rarities and delicacies of past seasons and distant countries, exquisite sausages, potted lampreys, strange messes from the Brazils and others still stranger from China, edible bird's nests and shark's fins, dressed after the latest mode of Macau by a Chinese lay brother. Later in his travels, he is taken to meet a Spanish princess, who inquires. How did you leave the fat waddling monks of Alcabaca? I hope you did not run races with them. Perhaps such tattle is what convinced the brass that something must be done. The remedy took the form of fat catcher door, 6 feet 6 inches high, but only 12.5 inches wide. The door served a practical purpose for the monks, many of whom were reportedly on the heavy side. There's even an inscription carved into the entrance to the refectory that translates to, consider that you eat the sins of the people. Allegedly, the monks were required to pass through the door to get their own food from the kitchen and bring it to the refectory to eat. If you couldn't fit, you weren't allowed to eat, which meant you were forced to fast until you lost the weight. Gluttony is a mortal sin, after all. According to a German Wikipedia entry, the monks passed through the door monthly, rather than daily, a more manageable mortification of the flesh for those with healthy appetites.